You're about to watch what we call an extended clip of the Young Turks. Uh, and the reality is it's somewhere in the middle. It's a little longer than our YouTube clips, but it's actually shorter than the whole two hour show, which you can get if you're a member. Uh, you can get it ad free and make sure you catch every news story we do that day. You're gonna love it as a full show. That's at tytnetwork.com slash join. Thanks for watching. All right, back on the Young Turks, Jenk, Anna, and Adam with you guys. Sean writes in, Obama never had to use a card to express emotion. He cried for the children during his presidency. And and it, look, we mentioned the case of Trayvon and unarmed black teenagers, but he also cried during uh, uh, the mass shootings. And he was like, he couldn't believe uh, that it was happening. And he put up a picture of the victims uh, on his desk and 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 tried to remind himself of that every single day. And by the way, you know, I'm. Um, I was not shy about criticizing Obama and his lack of genuineness on a lot of issues, but that was not among them. That that actually he was genuine about that. You could tell it broke him up, uh, and 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 he fought uh, way harder than he did on other issues, in my estimation, on that issue. Look, I wish he fought as hard on every issue, but it was but it was great that he fought on that, and with the emotion that he did. Um, Gabby Marita writes in, is Trump Ferengi? He needs to be reminded to emote human empathy. Otherwise, his default mode is scam everyone I meet. But look, that ending, Gabby, that's such a great point. Because this is something I've talked about a lot on this show. That not all rich people, not even close, but some wealthy folks have gotten there because they're willing to do what others are not willing to do. Because some of them have no shame. Whether it's releasing porn tapes, pretending that you didn't shoot them to get famous. I don't know who I might be referring to, I'm just saying, right? Uh, or it's guys like Trump who run Trump University, which is an obvious, obvious scam. And he knows he's taken the last dollar out of these people's pockets. And he thinks, suckers, because he can't, it's almost a so- sociopathic. I mean, is that the right way of saying yeah. <laughs> He's a sociopath, right? He, like, he just doesn't care. Like, I mean, how does that not break you up? He just, he does, that's why he's gotta try, try really hard to have empathy. Mm-hmm. Cause he, it's, it doesn't come natural to him. Anyway, okay, so member shout outs today are Grant Dixon and Michelle Wright. Uh, but let's do one more member shout out to Brent Welder. Uh, there he is, he's running for office in Kansas. We're raising money for him at tytkansas.com. That's you guys giving $15,840 so far. If he gets to $50,000, he could have a field team go knock on doors and win that race. Uh, poll released yesterday by Adams Group, PCCC, public policy polling, did the actual poll itself. It says that he's got a seven point lead on the Republican incumbent, Kevin Yoder. And if you don't know Kevin Yoder, uh, well, bless your heart. <laughs> okay, but let me just tell you quickly a couple of things about Kevin Yoder and how despicable he is. He's top 10 recipient of NRA money. Uh, and he sponsored an amendment that would make sure that uh, taxpayers have to insure Wall Street bankers when they're doing risky trading. So even if you're a conservative, you really want more bank bailouts. That's what Kevin Yoder's for. You're gonna be shocked to find out why. Turns out some of his top donors are the top banks in the country. <laughs> of course, Kevin Yoder is like a poster child for corruption. It gets worse. He also wants is in favor of legislation to help payday lenders. Basically, uh, loan sharks, and uh, and if he's the number one recipient of donor money from payday lenders in the country. Brent Welder, TYT member, Wolfpack volunteer, uh, just endorsed by Adams Group, P Triple C. Definitely. And while people at home are typing in tytkansas.com to make a donation to to Brent's campaign, let me just tell you again why he is so important that he is running. So, in addition to being ahead in the polls. He was a longtime TYT member, Wolfpack member. He was a Bernie Sanders delegate to the Democratic National Convention, serving on the platform committee where he authored a major campaign, campaign finance reform provision of what became the Democratic National Platform. He is, he is the real deal. This is the kind of person that the establishment does not want to be the Democratic standard bearer in a very competitive race like this, right? Also, you know, true to Democrats often shooting themselves in the foot, you know, they— they will determine, you know, we collectively will determine whether Democrats have the capability of picking up 20 seats, 30 seats, or more like 70 or 80 seats. And our chances will go way up to really send a message in this resistance moment 
if we have more people on the ballot like Brent Welder. Right? This is key to victory. He's out there campaigning on things people actually are inspired by. Medicare for all, campaign finance reform, expanding Social Security. So it is our obligation to make sure that he wins this primary against somebody who is campaigning as having the courage to compromise and leading from the center, leading from the middle. It's yeah. ridiculous. So seriously, TYTKansas.com, it is so important. And not only will he be able to hire a field team and really bring this message to voters, but we are liberating him from having to do call time to big out-of-state donors and instead allowing him to go around his district, knocking on tens of thousands of doors because we are fueling him at a grassroots level. All right, so look, if you're watching this later when we're not live and it's on YouTube, in the description box, you will have you could just click on TYTKansas.com. We'll also put Brent's website up in the description box, BrentWelder.com. Uh, so you can click on it, find out more about him. Uh, in, it'll be in the comment section on Facebook. Uh, you know, one more thing about Brent, which I love. He donated uh, to build a studio. So we got to mm-hmm. stick together, guys. So uh, he he was there for us. We want to be there for him. And and this is how we how we win. Uh, not any big donations. Brent gave a small donation here. You guys can give a small donation back to him, and we will as well. And let's get to fifty thousand dollars. Let's hire the team that he needs to do that, and get the volunteers out there. And wouldn't it be an it's like Adam said? Wouldn't it be an amazing story in the middle of Kansas? Here's this true progressive who's going to represent you guys, not taking any corporate PAC money. It'll send shockwaves through Washington, and it'll be fantastic. You can make that happen. All right, I feel like. Talking about the D triple C is a perfect follow up to what you guys okay. just discussed. So let's let's get to that story. Um, Trump said stupid things at CPAC. Whatever we all know it. So let's skip that story and go to uh, what's happening with Democrats. There's a special election taking place in Texas's seventh district, and it turns out that establishment Democrats are aggressively uh, pursuing uh, a an oppo research campaign against a Democrat who is running in the primary. Her name is Laura Moser. She is a progressive, and the D Triple C absolutely despises her. And uh, nothing made that clearer than uh, a recent attack that they lodged against her, which read as follows. Now, this is from Meredith Kelly, DCCC communications director. Uh, She says, voters in Houston have organized for over a year to hold Representative John Culberson accountable and uh, and win this Clinton district. Let's stop for a second. So in 2016, this particular district did vote for Hillary Clinton. So that's what she's referring to there. Unfortunately, she continues, Laura Moser's outright disgust for life in Texas disqualifies her as a general election candidate and and would rob voters of their opportunity to flip Texas's seventh in November. So let's stop here. They actually have an even worse quote about yeah, her that we're going to get to in a second. Um, but think about how unreal this is. This is the Democratic Party attacking a Democrat in the, in the primaries. First of all, what happened to pretending to be neutral during the primaries? I guess that's gone. That's totally out the door, right? You'll find out in a second their financial motivation to be opposed to Laura Moser and why they're not neutral. Um, secondly. They did an oppo research memo on her. Why is a Democrat the opposition? Shouldn't you be spending your time doing opposition research on the Republicans? That's, they're so soft in the general election. But the Democratic <laughs> Party is gathering opposition research on fellow Democrats because they're progressives. Right. <laughs> this just this proves everything we were worried about about the Democratic establishment. They said it in public. They did this publicly, which leads to point number three about that quote. You can't take it back. So if Laura Moser wins the primary, and you're goddamn right she will, and you should, we'll have the links down below to donate to her, to volunteer to her, go to her website. I, I couldn't oppose the DCCC more on this issue. So, but if she wins the primary, then the Republicans are going to run ads saying her own party right. said that she's disqualified because of her disgust for Texas. You monsters, you corrupt idiots. Can we emphasize the idiots part right there for a second? Yeah. So in their mind, they think we want to take back this district. We don't think this is the most viable candidate, and we're going to make the very rare step of blasting our own one of our own candidates. Right? We need to talk about a relatively new show called Un the Republic or UNFTR. 
As a Young Turks fan, you already know that the government, the media, and corporations are constantly peddling lies that serve the interests of the rich and powerful. But now there's a podcast dedicated to unraveling those lies, debunking the conventional wisdom. In each episode of Un*** the Republic, or UNFTR, the host delves into a different historical episode or topic that's generally misunderstood or purposely obfuscated by the so-called powers that be, featuring in-depth research, razor-sharp commentary, and just the right amount of vulgarity, the UNFTR podcast takes a sledgehammer to what you thought you knew about some of the nation's most sacred historical cows. But don't just take my word for it. The New York Times described UNFTR as consistently compelling and educational, aiming to challenge conventional wisdom and upend the historical narratives that were taught in school. For as the great philosopher Yoda once put it, you must unlearn what you have learned. And that's true whether you're in Jedi training or you're uprooting and exposing all the propaganda and disinformation you've been fed over the course of your lifetime. So search for UNFDR in your podcast app today and get ready to get informed, angered, and entertained all at the same time. If you need to understand the credibility of their political analysis, just look at their political tactic here, Mm -hmm. where the net effect of them attacking her, just like Debbie Wasserman Schultz doing what she did to Bernie, has the effect of rallying tons of support around her. There will now be links in this video. Our group is going to send an email for her tomorrow. Many other groups were out there endorsing her today. So if you want to think about the political strategic insights of the Democratic Party establishment, this is representative of it. It's it's just shooting ourselves in the foot after shooting ourselves in the foot. And that's why it's so important that we not buy into some of the conventional wisdom that we're told to believe over and over again about how to fight various fights. We need to support our own and get some real progressives elected. So Adam makes a great point. The only upside of this is that now you've almost guaranteed her a victory in the primary. Thanks a lot. God, you guys are so stupid. They thought in their bubble, like, we'll show her. Okay, we already picked our hand-picked people, one of whom is a former Goldman Sachs guy. So we've got this figured out. And all of our rich friends in Washington will be so aghast at Laura Moser, this will end her. No, what you just told everybody is she's the actual progressive in the race. And she doesn't represent the donors. Thank you, thank you, you morons. And so, and but one other thing is, Adam said we, and but they don't view it as yeah. as per, that themselves as progressive. That's we keep making that mistake. I make it too from time to time. They view themselves as how am I going to get rich? I'm the guy, and so that goes to the second terrible thing they said about Laura Moser. All right, so. Um- Let's uh, let's fast forward to graphic 23. So the more serious charge, this is according to The Intercept, the more serious charge the party leveled at Moser was to imply corruption and self-dealing. They wrote that in 2017, Moser paid over $50,000 in campaign money to her husband's DC consulting firm. More than one of every $6 spent by her campaign went straight into her husband's DC company's bank account. Okay, so that's true. But that money went into the firm's bank account and immediately went out of the bank account because that firm bought political ads for her, which is what political consultants do. Now, here is where the DCCC felt like there was a misstep. First of all, let me be clear, the DCCC does self-dealing all the time, okay? And what I mean by that is they have their little list of consultants that they literally force Democratic candidates to work with. And they make a ton of money off of um, taking campaign money from these candidates and padding their own pockets, okay? So this whole allegation of self-dealing is laughable when it comes from the very people who do it themselves on a regular basis. It's become so normalized. Now, uh, what, what, you know, Moser did in this case is not illegal. It's not unusual. Again, that money went toward political ads, which is what that money was supposed to go toward. Just, mm-hmm. just, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, of course. Okay, so let's just be clear about what firm this is. Mm-hmm. This is actually Bernie's online consulting firm. Yes. The one that helped him build a grassroots army. So essentially what she was doing was investing in the grassroots as an alternative to big money politics. That's right. Right? In this moment, as she gets attacked by the establishment, Ironically, she'll be more empowered to put up a big sale and let the wind blow her campaign forward because she has a huge grassroots army that she's been investing in, which is what we want candidates to do, 
right? I actually talked to someone a couple years ago who was the online director for a major progressive Senate tour now. And what this online director said was, if I made one mistake in the campaign, it wasn't going to bat early enough for bigger investment in online, because that is how you build your grassroots army and have them with you for long haul. So this is, I mean, maybe one fifth is too little. Maybe she should do more, if anything, but good for her for investing in the grassroots. Yeah, and I want to be clear about that. It, it, it's uh, the, the company's called Revolution Messaging, and it's it, Bernie's company, as in not that he owns it, right. he also used them during the 2016 campaign and to great effect. So again, if anything, you've just done an ad for Revolution Messaging, so congratulations. Uh, now, the losers who wound up losing to Donald Trump didn't use Revolution Messaging, they used the other companies that are connected to the DCCC and the people who work there. And they are brazen about those connections. Look, before we get into those connections, let me just say, I, I said on this show a long time ago that what do the corrupt do? It's, it's, you see it all across the world, it's not just America. In fact, the crown prince in Saudi Arabia is doing it right now. The most corrupt, the first thing they do is they smear the opposition with charges of corruption. So that by we go, wait a minute, but you're the corrupt one. They're like, oh yeah, now you're just trying to copy me. Right. And 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 sometimes the smear does work if you're not knee deep in politics and you don't know. In fact, I talked to a, a person who voted for Bernie Sanders today who said, well, I didn't know she said that about Texas. Oh, so sometimes the smears do work. Yeah. I, I think in this uh, in the long run here, it's going to backfire because of all the things that Adam has explained. Uh, but if you never heard about it, you might think, oh my God, Laura Moser's the one that's got issues. No, no, it's the DCCC, which in, in, in DC, they're known as, informally as the consultant factory. Because one, there's the revolving door, the people who used to work at the DCCC then become consultants, and then the DCCC gives them all the contracts. I gotta give you guys some specifics on that, because that is the part that really infuriated me. This is all about making money, this is all big business to them, and it's about crushing people who have a progressive grassroots agenda that they just cannot stand. So uh, to give you some examples of elected Democrats who have spoken out against um, this whole consultant scam, Representative Tim Ryan from Ohio said after the 2016 elections that the DCCC quote needs to go on a consultant detox. Okay, but there's more. I want to give you specifics. So uh, consultants take a percentage of all media placement of election ads. That enabled consulting firm Mothership Strategy, which was founded by DCCC veterans, to earn $3.9 million from the failed special election campaign uh, for John Ossoff uh, in Georgia last year. Around 2.5 million of that uh, Ossoff Hall came from media buys. So they're just they're just making money. And and keep in mind the DCCC pressures the candidates to work with their consultants. It's yeah, I just gotta make a real quick point about that. I'm gonna let Anna continue. Mm -hmm. So this is what I took. If Bernie Sanders and real progressives like Laura Moser, James Thompson in Kansas, Brent Welder in Kansas, Allison Hartson in California, the list goes on. If those real progressives win, they're fighting to get money out of politics. Well, that would take money from these consultants. That would be devastating to them. On the other hand, when John Ossoff loses, who cares? They got rich. What difference does it make if John Ossoff wins or loses? They got the $3.9 million anyway. So it's not, they don't share your priorities. Their priority is how do I make a buck? Mm -hmm. And then for them to turn around and smear a progressive like Moser, beyond the pale, of course. You got more? I do have more. So why do they hate Moser so much? Yes, it has something to do with her progressive values. But Moser actually called out the DCCC back in 2007, 2017 in a an article that she wrote for Vogue. And in that article, she it was titled, want more women to vote, here's an idea, stand up for them. And it went on to slam the DCCC for saying the party would welcome anti-choice candidates. Now, in that piece, she wrote the following. As a first time congressional candidate, I've been warned not to criticize Ben Ray Lujan. And is that how you say his name? Uh, it's Lujan. Lujan, okay. Uh, ben Ray Lujan and the powerful Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee. But I cannot hold my tongue while Lujan and the DCCC abandon the commitment to human rights that brought me to the party in the first place. 
DCCC didn't like that. And so the opposition research began immediately. And by the way, just to clarify for anyone who's confused, why some people are, you know, why she's being smeared as someone who hates Texas. She had once said that she likes living in the city more than a small town. And so she gave the example of Paris, Texas as a place that she didn't enjoy living in. And the DCCC took that out of context and used it to smear her as someone who hates Texas. And and by the way, she was referring to Paris, Texas, where her grandparents are from, and which is hundreds of miles away from her district. But they made it seem like she's saying it about her own voters in her district. A disingenuous lie from the DCCC, who would have guessed? So I guess this is a declaration of war against all progressives and against the non-corrupt. Look, so Moser, by the way, is also just Democrat. And and just Democrats, the one thing you should know, and you can look at their progressive platform, etc. But a lot of groups are progressive. P Triple C is wonderfully progressive. Democracy for America, our revolution, etc. But all of them have pledged not to take corporate PAC money. The Just Democrats, none of them take corporate PAC money. So that is what makes those consultants in D.C. furious. So in reality, the executive director, for example, the new executive director for D Triple C is Daniel Santa. Married to Elizabeth Christie Senna, who after Daniel was selected as the executive director, his wife wound up being a partner at Greenberg, Quinlan, Rosner. And then the DCCC paid them $395,000 over two years and in the 2016 election. And in this cycle, have already funneled $525,000 to them. So what a wonderful little circle they have going. But there's a lot more details. We'll put the article from The Intercept, which is Excellent in the description box as well. Written by three excellent reporters, Lee Fong, Ryan Grimm, who's also a TYT contributor, and David Day, and as good as it gets. Can I say one more thing on this? Yeah. They might have done, done us a favor by outing themselves in this situation, because this is honestly just the tip of the iceberg. They have made explicit what they do behind the scenes every single day. We, you know, we talk to so many candidates who feel pressured by them, who are encouraged to get out of the race by them. Mm -hmm. Even those who are ahead in fundraising because of grassroots donations are told to get out of the race because they're too progressive. In some cases, you know, other reasons that are because they're too liberal in various ways. This is this this should be a rallying cry for all of us and a wake up call. And I know that like, my grandma in the past has told me, oh, I wrote a ten dollar check to the Democratic Party, and I'm like, grandma, I like where you're going in general, <laughs> but <laughs> let me talk to you about other places to do donate. Right, but they people just assume good intentions here, mm -hmm. and they're un, not only undermining our agenda, but again, I believe undermining our ability to win. And I'm going to say we in the broad sense, those who want a big resistance victory in 2018, our ability to win because they're intentional, unintentionally sabotaging us by putting lame people on the ballot and undermining people who can actually win. Yeah, and and one last thing, it's a story that uh, that we broke at TYT. TYT investigates reporter Michael Tracy broke it. It's referenced in this Intercept story. There's a memo that they sent to all the candidates. Uh, now, one of them said, "Hey, don't attack uh, one another." Oops, you just attacked a, a candidate in a primary, violating your own memo in the most brazen, outrageous way that I have ever seen. So apparently, you didn't mean it. That you, what you meant was progressives unilaterally surrender to the establishment candidates, okay? Yeah, don't attack us, that's that, what they meant. Exactly, mm -hmm. God, yeah. there's the worst hypocrites. But number two, they told the candidates, and that's what James Thompson from Kansas, a wonderful progressive who almost won last time in Kansas, this time he will win, is objected to, he said, why do I have to spend all of this money with only the consultants that are on your list? What if I found a great person working in the middle of Kansas? What if I've got great progressives? No, you won't help me unless I spend most of my money with those consultants that you're in bed with. He said, no, sorry, no, I'm not doing it, okay? And that's what all these progressive candidates should say. And to Adam's point, to all of you out there, if you're gonna give money, that's great because small dollar donations are pulled together, are more effective, more powerful, and will beat these corporate PACs. But give it to progressive groups that you trust, and because those groups have earned your trust. Don't just hand it over to people that call themselves Democrats. All right, check out all the links below. <laughs> Wonderful story by The Intercept. And by the way, all the candidates we mentioned, we'll put their links down below too. Go give them small dollar donations directly. Don't run it through this consultant factory. Okay, we're out of time. All right, Adam Green, speaking of wonderful progressive groups, go everybody check out boldprogressives.org. Bold what? I believe it's boldprogressives.org. 
<laughs> All right. And it's the uh, PCCC, the P part is very important there. Yes, is, extremely uh, important. No, no, no ambiguity about that. We are not the DCCC. But that's it, actually, <laughs> you know, you did that on purpose. Yeah. And, and it's actually perfect in this case, because instead of the Democratic, you know, CCC, it's the progressive change campaign, the change campaign committee in this case. Um, so, all right, thanks, Adam. We appreciate it. Ida Rodriguez is next, and uh, we have some amazing for you stories for you guys as well, including uh, one of the worst ideas on a college campus I have ever seen. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to this podcast. You're only halfway through, so hold, hold, stay right here. Just want to remind you if you want to get all five segments of the Young Turks uh, commercial free, these are just two of them. Uh, every day we do it. Uh, so go to tytnetwork.com slash join and you get the whole five segments, two hours ad free. Do it now. All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, two quick tweets for you guys. Matt Odom says, uh, that's one reason why I can't ever be president. Screw Alabama. I'd let, <laughs> I'd let them loose the second after I was sworn in. That's not the right move, Matt. Okay, good folks in Alabama. Okay, um, Daniel uh, Pereja said the Pilgrims and their descendants raped and murdered their way into North America, and they probably weren't England's best, but I'm sure some were good people. Hallelujah! <laughs> uh, I mean, you want to talk about projection? We talk about it almost daily on the show. Conservative projection: the undocumented immigrants that came to this country originally. Some of them were murderers and rapists. Yep. I'm sure some of them were good, and they were. Right? Uh, and uh, and and so they project on to, uh, to everyone else. All right. Uh, what's next, Anna? All right. The governor of Missouri is facing an indictment uh, because of the fact that he a had an affair, which isn't illegal, uh, but b tied up his mistress while she was naked. Took a photo of her without her consent, and by the way, this is all alleged. Uh, and then uh, proceeded to blackmail her if she ever talked about the affair publicly. Now, those are the accusations against the governor of Missouri. I'm not talking about the governor from 10 years ago. Uh, I'm talking about the governor now. The <laughs> governor now in Missouri is facing an indictment for these reasons. Uh, CBS News has more on this. Let's take a look. At TYT, we frequently talk about all the ways that big tech companies are taking control of our online lives, constantly monitoring us and storing and selling our data. But that doesn't mean we have to let them. It's possible to stay anonymous online and hide your data from the prying eyes of big tech. And one of the best ways is with ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN hides your IP address, making your active ID more difficult to trace and sell to advertisers. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your network data to protect you from eavesdroppers and cyber criminals. And it's also easy to install. A single mouse click protects all your devices. But listen, guys, this is important. ExpressVPN is rated number one by CNET and Wired Magazine. So take back control of your life online and secure your data with a top VPN solution available, ExpressVPN. And if you go to expressvpn.com slash TYT, you can get three extra months for free with this exclusive link just for TYT fans. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash TYT. Check it out today. Eric Greitens has repeatedly denied criminal wrongdoing in his relationship with his former hairdresser. But on Thursday, a grand jury indictment charged him with felony invasion of privacy. The indictment states that on March 21st, 2015, Greitens photographed an unnamed woman in a state of full or partial nudity without her knowledge or consent. It alleges Greitens then transmitted the image in a manner that allowed access to that image via a computer. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman says if proved. The taking of the photo alone is a misdemeanor. Where it goes up to a felony is if you disseminate that photo. We've answered. Greitens has previously dodged questions about whether he took the photo. Audio recordings obtained by CBS News appear to show the woman detailing her alleged encounter with the governor. Eric is absolutely innocent of these charges. On Thursday, Greitens' attorney, Ed Dowd, called the charges baseless and unfounded. And in a statement, the governor said, I made a personal mistake before I was governor. I did not commit a crime. I look forward to the legal remedies to reverse this action. So Republicans in the state of Missouri are saying that this is not true. In fact, 
This is a Soros, George Soros backed <laughs> plot, okay, uh, to go after him and the Republican Party in the state. I mean, what has Soros not been blamed for? I was going to say, he's the busiest dude. He's <laughs> super on busy. The <laughs> there are a lot of issues he's, he's concerned about. He's putting his hand in everything. Yeah. And he's responsible for the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he's that. He's really, he's responsible for everything. He's very active, um, active man. Yeah, if it's true, then he must be a superhero. Yeah. Because he gets around quick. Uh, so so now, first of all, uh, I don't trust Greitens. He's got uneven eyes. He's got the Forrest Whitakers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then I feel bad for Forrest Whitaker. But <laughs> take, well, a well. Look, take a look at that mugshot again. Anyway, he. Um, so we emphasize the lies because he hasn't been convicted yet. But a grand jury indicted him. They they handcuffed him. Oh yeah. And 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 then took a mugshot, etc. Now, uh, to be fair to the Republicans in Missouri, yes, the Missouri GOP is sticking up for Greitens and claiming it's a George Soros plot, as Anna told you, but. Uh, Republican uh, state senators are saying, I don't know, man, we might have to impeach this guy. That is on the table. Republican state senator uh, Caleb Browden said he was disgusted to learn that the that the grand jury found sufficient evidence and that uh, he is demanding his immediate resignation. Republican Re- Representative Nate Walker said, uh, come on, man, he was let off in handcuffs. Uh, he's the sitting governor. This is, we, you, got, you gotta go. Um, so it's not it's not a Democratic plot. It's not a liberal plot. And genuine Republicans in the state of Missouri are horrified. So look, and we're libs. So if he had tied up his mistress in the basement, that's between them. Okay, like, and think, she was into it. Because there are people it. who are yeah. into that, and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. And, and and so she, they had a consensual affair. That's not an issue at all. She, the reason we found out about this is not because of her, or not because of Greitens, but because she told her husband at the time. And the husband recorded it. So it was really reliable evidence because it was at the time the husband recorded it, later gave it to police because he was was a little pissed. And she explained that in that incident, she did not agree to having the picture taken and that he blindfolded her, tied her up, took her clothes off, then took the picture and said, if you ever tell anyone, I'll release this picture. And that's all on the tape of her explaining to her husband. Because she was married. Yeah. Because well, he didn't want it to affect his political. No, career. no, but he threatened her to. Yeah. To, oh, because she was. But married. not only, not only married, married, but put it on the internet. It's revenge uh, porn. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's yeah. disgusting. So. Yeah. So if it was just a consensual affair, I don't know. Maybe some conservatives would be mad, but apparently they're not mad about that at they're all not anymore. Mad right? About consensual but, affairs. But I wouldn't it. be mad. I, pro- progressives shouldn't be mad. That's their business. And that's between him and his family. By the way, he he did all this and he knew this, and he ran as when he was running for governor. Uh, talking about his family values. But you cannot <laughs> say that it's okay because you're always going around preaching, telling people that you abide by the Bible and the word and adultery is against the Bible. So why is it okay? Because it's consensual. His wife didn't consent to him having that affair with that <laughs> other woman. When do people have time for affairs? This is more of a general oh, question. Yeah, like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. When? Someone please explain it to me well, because you- are, are you overworking me? I could not have an affair if I wanted to, and I don't want to. But like, it's just insane that like these people have time to have a full-on family, a political career, and then they're like banging on the side. How does this work? Someone and it's explain. like an extensive uh, affair. It's, it's sexy time. We got yeah. time to tie yeah. each other up, yeah. and blindfolds. Role playing. Come on. Yeah, shame on you. There's no such thing as a consensual affair unless your part, your, your spouse knows that you are having an affair. You're always holding up all these morality, um, I can't even talk. I like so self righteous. Yeah, all these yeah. self righteous things that everybody else has to aspire to, jump up to. You got to live by those two. And that dude looks creepy. That little eye, he did it. <laughs> I want to know. He did it. Okay. <laughs> also, what I'm about to show you guys is his mugshot. Like, I never understand people who smile during their mugshot. Like, it looks like he's trying to hold back from smiling a little bit. Yeah. Like, Psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. one of them. He's trying to hide his little eye. Uh, <laughs> We're terrible. Okay. Okay, by the way, yes, I don't care about the size of his eyes. That's okay. not an issue. Do I, I have to clarify? Do we have to clarify that? Well, you know what? <laughs> For all of those uh, TYT people who always say that I'm a comedian, I have to say that because you guys get all sensitive and cry on my Facebook page. But also, Rick Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Fire Marshal Bill, uh, and so I just got to get that out of my system because I've been holding on to it for a long time. <laughs> okay, okay, we got to get to the Olympic story. Right. Um, stuff's happening at the Olympics. Uh, 
Primarily, people are winning medals, we all know this. However, uh, doping has been one of the bigger topics uh, in past Olympics. And this year, Russia specifically has been um, penalized uh, for past doping scandals. So as a result, uh, Russian athletes are not allowed to fly the Russian flag. Their flag isn't shown in any of the Olympic imagery. Um, And you would think that some of these Russian athletes would be a little more careful with their doping this time around. But so far, two Russian athletes have tested positive for doping. First, there was a Russian curler who post, uh, who tested positive. And then the more recent case is the one that I particularly enjoy. So uh, it is a Russian bobsledder. Her name, she is a Russian bobsledder. Her name is Nadezda uh, Sergeva. And uh, she wore this wonderful shirt that says, I don't do doping. But then she tested positive for doping. Oops. Uh, Russian Bobsled Federation President Alexander Zubkov announced that she tested positive for a banned heart medication uh, known as trimethazine. And um, that's not good. So she does do doping. She apparently likes the doping. She she denies that she ever even took the medication. But again, she, she tested positive for it. So I don't know what's going on there. And the Russian Bobsled Federation president announced it. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Trump denies it. He, <laughs> he says she strongly denies it. She strongly denies it. So there's so there must not be any. I, don't know, I feel like the story is overblown. No, no, no. It's it's just a fun little story. Yeah. But uh, did but, he really deny it? No, no, no. I was going to say I, I'm leaving. I just I, I can't take it anymore. But, look, know, but, but the thing is, it's like you can see him doing it, yeah, couldn't of you? Course. Right? Like those poor Russians. What? what I can't believe they're doing this to them. Um, usually, anyway, usually when people say I don't do doping, they probably are. <laughs> it's like I, I feel like she thought that that shirt would protect her. Like if up. I just wear a shirt that says I don't do doping, then no one will think that I'm doping. I mean, that is a classic case of I don't know if it's projection, but yeah, it's a it's as old as Shakespeare. Me yeah. thinks the lady doth protest too much. Oh, right. And and it's the same thing that Trump does. I'm a very stable genius. Wait, was anybody questioning your stability? Well, actually, kind of. That's yeah, and yeah. you're insecure about it. That's why you're screaming on Twitter that you're a very stable genius. I'm gonna get a shirt that says "I don't fornicate." <laughs> well, I <laughs> might send the wrong message. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I have big hands. <laughs> so one more thing, I disagree with you, Anna, on this very important story. Why? I think the funnier one is the Russian curler who did oh, doping. Why? What? Doping? Do you need to do this with a broom? No, no. no. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever like aggressively swept your home? It is exhausting. <laughs> I never aggressively sweep without taking, I do. without doping. I do, <laughs> and I feel like you know, if I really wanted to enhance my performance in sweeping my home, I would take hard medication. <laughs> I it's stopped. unbelievable. <laughs> I stopped sweeping when my kids got in middle school, but um, it was pretty uh, hard work back in the See? day. But there are so many jokes on on my Facebook page from other comedians about curlers. Mm-hmm. They made me cry laughing. It was just like, <laughs> dude, it's come on, man. I mean, if you're doing competitive weightlifting, if you're doing curling like this, okay, fine, I get the doping. But uh-huh. curling, <laughs> the sweeping, and the no, but you're. Come on. I, <laughs> look, I know, I know. To us, it looks silly, but it's still an athletic thing to do, and it's it's not easy. I right. bet if you were up against other curlers, you would really struggle. And he's at uh, the Olympics, so he's look, like one of the best curlers in the world. Yeah, right? look, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, curl my hair. Yeah, it's me a lot too. Of work. You know what? Don't that kind make of me. Like I can't. I'm sure I couldn't make the American curling team, Mm -hmm. but like, don't make me go back to Turkey and Uh become a a Turkish Olympic curler. Damn! (laughs) I dare you! I dare you to do it. They're like, where are we gonna find ice for you? And and for those of you uh, snarky, self righteous people that are like, you're making fun of somebody who's in the Olympics. I'm not making fun of somebody who who worked really hard to get to the Olympics in a sport that they love and respect. I'm talking about somebody who took uh, medication to beat somebody else at a sport that looks like sweeping the floor. (laughs) (laughs) But also, 
look, you, you got to hand it to the Russians for having giant sets of balls. And what I mean by that well, is- Well, like, they just shrunk a little bit because of the dopamine. No, that's true, but <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But what I mean is, like they, it's like, there's a there's extra scrutiny and they'll still do the doping. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah. Wow. It's entitlement. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, yeah. let's squeeze in the last okay, story. Okay. Okay. Emotional support animals. Do they really provide emotional support? And I'm not talking about what we all think. I'm talking about scientific evidence to back it up. Now, recently, Vox asked this incredibly important question to Molly Crossman. She's a psychology researcher at Yale. And uh, what she says is that um, there's actually no scientific consensus. Uh, there's no scientific evidence, conclusive evidence, showing that emotion, emotional support animals um, provide the emotional support that they purportedly do, right? Okay, so I, I just I have to jump in and make three uh, points about this. If you read this whole Vox article, you will come away, I think, thinking the same thing I thought, which is Molly Crossman is the smartest person in America. Uh, she, her answers were. Terrific! She's like such a scientist. She's like, not enough data. Here's what data shows, here's what data doesn't show, etc. Uh, number two, uh, she made a point that made me go, oh, that's so smart. She, she, about this particular issue, the heart of the issue. She said, look, if you've got these emotional support animals, what we're trying to get you to do if you have a phobia, for example, phobia of heights, is we're trying to get you to face it a little bit at a time, nice and easy, etc. And then know that you can get past it. But if you're relying on an animal, then you're gonna think, oh, it was because of Buddy that I could face my fear. And then without Buddy, then you can't face that fear, right? <sighs> and Whatever. It's so it's a little counterproductive, could be a little counterproductive. But my favorite part of the story is she gave an example of how they once brought an emotional support animal onto a college campus at Washington University in St. Louis. It was a bear cub. And so they're like, oh, this bear cub is gonna help you, except for the fact that it's a bear. Until it grows up. It, no, no, not even grows up. It attacked the students. He's like, mm, lunch. <laughs> Instead of giving them emotional support, he tried to rip them apart. Look, science is important, <laughs> but I think in some cases, science doesn't matter. In this case, science doesn't matter. Uh, uh, animals provide emotional support. I know this from personal experience. Uh, Molly, I guess you're smart. You're at Yale or whatever, but I, I'm not buying what you're selling. So, <laughs> I, I want to say this. I know your relationship with your dog because mm -hmm. I follow you on Instagram, but you have consideration for your dog. I'm an animal lover. So I will say this. That lady that was on the airplane with me that squished her dog under the seat and the dog was like that the whole flight, shame on you. The lady that was at the grocery store that had her dog trembling, shame on you. Thanks for watching what I hope was a lovely edition of the Young Turks. Now you know that that is two of the five segments that we do because that's free. We want to have you support independent media and come watch the whole show that we do every day. That's five segments overall, no ads at all. That's at tytnetwork.com slash join. Come become a member. Thanks for watching either way. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Young Turks. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash tyt. I'm your host, Cenk Uger, and I'll see you soon.